Y'all know I love talking about boundaries on this channel and this is going to trigger some people because I saw this quote and I had to screenshot it and save it to my phone that said having high standards protects you from low quality experiences and it registered and spoke to my heart. But first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Karina Lude. Mental Gems is channels dedicated to leveling up in all areas of your life. So let us learn together, read together, but most importantly, grow together. Now, without further ado, let's get into this video. Let's start with number one that I wrote here. Setting and having boundaries is one of the most valuable things you can do for yourself. Boundaries are like personal guidelines that you set for yourself, which tells others how you'd like to be treated. When you have and enforce your boundaries, you protect yourself from low quality experiences and mistreatments, right? Here are some ways that having and setting boundaries can help protect you. Yes, I went into whole studious mode for this one. The first is it protects your time. Need I say more? When you have boundaries, it helps you to prioritize your time and say no to things that don't align with your values or goals. This helps you focus on the things that matter to you and protect your time from being wasted on activities or people that are important in the long run. A lot of people that don't have boundaries are always readily available and people don't respect your time. They do not respect your time. When you show that you're always available, you're always down for whatever, down to go wherever, like you just never have anything going on people will treat you as such <laughs> they will treat you as such they will see no reason to respect your time and keep asking you have to know how to say no put a blue heart in the comment if you have difficulty with saying no to people I know too many people struggle with this. You are not alone. Because somebody probably feel like, because I used to feel like that. Because, oh my goodness. I tell you guys all the time, I'm an ex-people pleaser. I've been, this has been the year for me. 2023 has been the year where God was like, enough, Kareem. We're going to get you out of this. It's not doing good for you. And he has done a complete 180 on me, okay? I am no longer struggling with that. Now, there are still times where I find it like, but I, listen, I was going into debt because I was people pleasing. And when I got into debt, no one cared listen no one cares when you're in debt the same people that you go to debt for will not care okay I had to learn that I would have like be going through it you burnt out you just stretching yourself thin and then when you're sick you're in the hospital no one cares no one cares you again by yourself when people call you instead they're telling you about their problems what's going on with them no one cares right and I had to learn that's not like you don't do things for people to care like I always want to say that that's not the case but even biblically going back to my roots reading my Bible spending time with God going back into the word and seeing how the best story in the Bible to me that little clip I love the story of Moses a lot right but there was so many lessons in that story and one of the key lessons for me in that story was was God sending Moses's father-in-law to talk to him when he came to him and was like um, seeing how Moses was speaking to all the people of the land handling everything being a judge and uh, amongst them leading them direct them telling them what God was saying to him and it was hundreds of thousands of them and he was burnt out day in and day out he was mentally going through it and God put it in Moses's father-in-law to tell him my son you will burn out Okay, you need to assign other people to help you. Have people in charge of thousands and hundreds of thousands. Divide your responsibilities so you're not burnt out, okay? And I also say there are stories in the Bible that speak about people that went through depression that God worked with. And even while God was working with them, they were in depression. I believe it was Elisha that God had to literally send an angel to wake him up, to remind him to eat, to feed him. That's how depressed he was. And he would eat and go right back to sleep, you know? So a lot of people make you feel guilty for some of these things but God leaves these stories in the Bible it's not an accident it's to teach us that I care about your mental health and I know your intentions are good Moses intentions were good in helping them but it was too much for him it was overwhelming you know and God wants to tell you that you need to learn how to say no to people it is not you're not less of a Christian or less of a better person or a good person for saying no to people and having your boundaries and limits like I can't handle that that's too much for me you know you're not a bad person for that because a lot of people will feel so guilty and they go help people and then they're in the asylum they're going crazy now they're using substances trying to save other people and then you see it draws you away from God sometimes helping some people draws you away from God there's people that you decide to help and get out of their situation and your spiritual life start to suffer and this is when you have to say you have to pray about it like this is your sign if you were feeling guilty about it this is God talking to you right now okay sis okay bro 
you don't got to and always prioritize your mental health because you can't worship God if you're not good up here okay so take care of yourself and have your boundaries too say no the second one you avoid abusive relationships having boundaries can help you avoid manipulative relationships in your personal life when you have boundaries you can easily spot when someone is crossing them but if you don't have boundaries how are you gonna know it's being crossed if you never had them to begin with or laid them out? This is why a lot of y'all let people treat y'all however, talk to y'all however, do whatever to you because you never had boundaries to begin with and you never laid down the law on how you wanna be treated. So of course people are gonna treat you how they feel is appropriate to treat you because what was your boundaries, sis? What was your boundaries? So in order for people to respect your boundaries, you have to have them in the first place and you have to lay them down and be like, this is the limit. You don't talk to me like that. <laughs> and people will think you're rude. You're disrespectful. You're going too far when you have your boundaries, when you express yourself, when you talk. They will think that because people hate when people make it difficult for them to disrespect them. I always say this quote that my best friend told me this quote a while ago. We're having a conversation where she says some people, if they make it so easy for them to be used by others, they will always they will always be used even by some really good people. Good people use people too. Think about it. You would like to consider yourself as a good person. I always say that. When you need a favor, don't you call the person that you feel is going to say yes first, first, and then you go down the line and call the person that you know is going to say no last. And if somebody always say yes to you, aren't they always going to be the one you call? You have to have a kind of be like, let me be considerate of this person's situation. Let me not do that to them, right? I caught myself doing that, like starting to use somebody. I'm like, whoa, let me know, you know, but that will happen. But the person did not have boundaries for themselves. That's why they keep saying yes to you. So you have to learn that if you don't want a boundary crossed, it has to be set in the first place. And if you don't have no boundaries set, it will continue to be crossed. It will continue to be disrespected. Next is it preserves your energy. When you set boundaries, you protect your energy. When you say yes to everything that comes your way, it's easy to get overwhelmed and burnt out by setting by setting boundaries, you can focus on what gives you energy and avoid what drains you. A lot of you guys are tired. Y'all can sleep for eight to nine hours and wake up tired. Y'all depressed. Y'all could be in happy situations and be so depressed because you thinking of all these things you got to go do for somebody else or how somebody tried you the other day. They spoke to you any kind of way or you in this toxic relationship with this person and you don't know how to get out of it. So sleep don't even rejuvenate you. Eating a healthy balance. You working out. You at the gym. You you're going to get facials and you still struggling. You still looking old. You aging faster than you need to age because of lack of boundaries and asserting yourself. And I'll do another video, not to make this one too long, on how to assert yourself. Okay, now you got boundaries. Now how do you assert yourself? First of all, it does take practice. Like I said, in my people pleasing X journey or whatever, there were still times that I still found myself going back. But you know, one thing, a lot of prayer, but also self-talk, reading books, getting help, getting advice like from people, you know, it's practice. Everything is practice experience. And there's a video I want to do for you guys on necessary pain, why pain is necessary. But I think I'll record that next week and not come out somewhere down the line because pain is necessary for growth, man. I used to be the type that hate any kind of uncomfortable feeling or painful feeling, but it's taught me a lot. I needed to be used. I needed to be disrespected. I needed to go through what I went through to be who I am today, to have boundaries, to finally say enough. That's why they say someone won't want better for themselves until they're at rock bottom. Some people have to hit rock bottom financially, spiritually, mentally, physically before they finally change. They need that pain because when it's all sweet, you don't see no reason to elevate. So when I see pain, I always pray, God, give me the strength to endure this pain, but I don't necessarily pray for it to go away anymore because I know if I'm getting it, then there's going to be something beautiful that come that's going to come out of it. I'm going to grow out of it. And that goes for everything. The most imaginable things, you know, I've been through a lot. I've been through some imaginable things. And when I was younger, you'd have this, woe is me. How come da 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 da? But now as I'm older, I'm like, yo, I love who I am. I wouldn't change. Well, yeah, you know, there's some hurt that, that hurts, you know, there's some trauma there, but you still can look through it and be like, I'm not a victim. I'm an overcomer. And this helps me to be a better person. Like I love who 
this made me, you know, it made me strong, it made me resilient, it made me understand people better, more compassionate, more resilient, you know, and I'm grateful for those experiences. That's how we got to see it. The next is promote self-respect. Yes, having boundaries in place promotes self-respect. When you have clear, healthy boundaries, it communicates to others that you value and respect yourself and you expect the same from them. People don't respect people who don't respect themselves. That's just how it is. If you're the butt of every joke, you don't respect yourself, you're late to everything, your yes can never be yes, your no can never be no, your word is not bond, like, and you expect people to be loyal to you, respect you and stuff. You got to be somebody when you come into a room, you command respect because you respect yourself. And I know a lot of my young people, and I'm young too, whatever, I be talking like this, but a lot of them don't like to hear when you say dress for success. That's something I grew up hearing, right? You dress for success, for the environment you at. I couldn't have went to the office that I worked in with a crop top and a mini skirt or anything like that. No one would take me serious as a professional, right? Even going to uh, um, to certain meetings and stuff like that. And if you say something like that, oh, you're not body positive, you're not this and that. Now, if I know, even if I'm on social media, I know my, you, you unless your page is private, if your, if your page is public, you expose yourself to the whole world. Billions of, Instagram got billions of users. That's what you're presenting yourself at. How do you want to be taken? Nobody wants to hear that. How do you want to be remembered when you're 50, when you're 60? Because when you're young, you're combative. I used to be that. I can only speak this way because I lived it. I was that way. You couldn't tell me nothing. And then experience will teach you. It will humble you. Like if you want to attract a wholesome man, a respectable man, but you look where you're going. You don't have enough respect for yourself to even go where respectable people will be. And you know what I mean. You wear what's going to only attract the people that's not going to respect you. You know what a respectable man want to see. You want a respectable wife. You want a respectable woman. But look where you frequent. You and your boys go to the club every weekend and sleep with at least two girls random at the bar. And now you have a body count of like 60 and a respectable woman is going to be like, I care for my health and my body. I'm not going to date you. You brag about your, you know, you know, so like make it add up, make it make sense. Men don't want to hear that, but they think it's, it's okay until they want a wife until they don't want just anyone. And they end up settling for what they can attract. And then they have like what? Five, six divorces still looking for love, but you're still doing the same thing. A lot of these quote unquote high value men will marry the trophy wife, the beautiful girl, the girl everybody wants, desires and is on there. And then realize they're not happy. There's no substance. They can't be a good mom to them and to, to their children. And then going through divorces, looking for more, going for more. Same with women. They have like, how many women on my other channel I've done breakdowns for that have like five, six, seven, eight marriages. And they kept attracting the same type of man. And at some point, this is why I say accountability. But this is also the thing where I say you got to reach rock bottom. There was some women that reached rock bottom was like enough. And then you saw they found it happily ever after. But at some point, the hard truth got to be accepted. A lot of people don't want to hear the hard truth. They'll roast you in the comments. They'll think you're being self-righteous. But it's like when our grandmas and our moms and our sisters were talking they were right when they tried to prevent you from certain mistakes when your fathers were talking to you, your uncles they were right about a lot of stuff and we don't take them and they were teaching us how to have boundaries and we didn't know it like i remember um she was like a second mother to me this lady that went to my church and she used to give me and my sister advice all the time because you know we didn't have our mom around whatever and she told me you're not a piece of meat it's a haitian thing <laughs> You're not a piece of meat. Men shouldn't be just touching you like that. Your thighs are sacred. This is how she was speaking life into me. She was like, if they feel like you advertising it all like this, they, they can just touch you however and this and that. And I have to go through some experiences to learn. Yo, she was right. But when you were young, you ain't trying to hear it. You ain't trying to set those boundaries for yourself. You got to present be somebody that's going to respect. Boundaries give you respect. And I'm not saying how you dress should make you open to a lot of stuff, you know. But in the world, we have to be realistic. I know the morals. We would love to say, hey, 
how a woman dress should not a man should do that but you know there's sickos out there regardless of your thoughts your think pieces on twitter or whatever there's always going to be sickos pedos and all those out there that don't care for your ideology so you're going to have to assimilate okay and you're going to have to project that and a lot of times we feel like our moral understanding of something is going to protect us the world don't care the world does not care and you have to keep yourself safe and that's the true word and people don't want to hear that so have some boundaries for yourself physically mentally how you present yourself if you want to be respected be somebody that's worthy of being respected also you can't be seen as you try to be seen as like a michelle obama but you gossiping and fighting every weekend with people you fighting with people back and forth online on social media like going back and forth you like in every drama your name every time your name comes up is for some mess you don't have no peace around you but you want a peaceful aura you have a chaotic energy you have to chill you have to chill what image do you want to promote for yourself okay next is having and enforcing boundaries also helps build trust in your relationships when you communicate your boundaries clearly to others it demonstrates that you are reliable and trustworthy people like some women they don't want to be in like a polygamous relationship i know that's an extreme example they don't want to share their man but they never say that in the beginning maybe they don't want to have intimacy they don't want him to be turned off or not attracted to him anymore so they try to string the person along and then in the middle of the relationship is when you try to enforce some boundaries and it's like but there's a trust where you just say it like it is the first time, you know, it builds a trust that this person keeps it real and people know not to even step up to you because you were real about yourself. Like you were clear about your stipulations, your rules and what you want out of life. You made it clear and you weren't beating around the bush. You weren't like, you know, having boundaries for yourself make you bold. It makes you bold even when you get pushback. Pushback shouldn't make you cower and be like, oh, I don't want to. You don't care how people see you or what they think about it. It makes you bold. Next is when it comes to the workplace, relationships and friendships, having clear and healthy boundaries is essential. It prevents others from taking advantage of you and communicates to others how they should treat you. For example, in a workplace, having boundaries can help you avoid overworking and burning out. Stop picking up shifts for people while they're going on vacations and you know you don't want to, but you want to keep that friendship going and you overdoing it. That boss refused to promote you, promoting people over you, but you keep doing favors for work, clocking out mad late, doing that. <sighs> Listen, stop it. When communicating with friends and partners, having boundaries can help you assert your needs and avoid misunderstandings of toxic behavior. Stop letting your friend try you in public, talking to you in any kind of way in public, feeling like they can get away with mistreatment or this and that. Like, stop doing that. A lot of y'all have friends and they're not really your look. I don't want to use Shanquella as an example, but sheesh, you know, there gotta be some kind of people gotta know they can't try you like that. You got from the jump, they can't try you like that. I won't even be in your space if there's shadiness. Some of you spot shadiness. You know it's shadiness. You know they talking about you behind your back. You know they plotting against you. And you're so desperate for friends. You stick in that situation. You have no boundaries for yourself, no self-respect. And I know this is harsh, but like I said, I wouldn't be talking like this if I didn't go through it. It's like me talking to myself. If you know these people don't like you, why are you in their face? Why are you traveling with them, picking up their tabs? Why are you in their space? Why? Why? They don't like you like that. And you know it. <sighs> Let me calm down. <laughs> I really just want the best for you guys, okay? And boundaries, it protects you from low quality experiences, low quality friendships, low quality relationships, low quality life. Knowing what you want for yourself, I deserve better. I have boundaries with what kind of life I wanna live. It's gonna make push you harder to search for those opportunities, to attract them to yourself. I deserve a life of peace, a life of glamor, a life of joy. So everything I do is gonna be geared towards that. If I want a life of peace, then I'm not gonna associate myself with chaos. If I want a life of glamor, then I'm not gonna mix myself with mediocrity. If I want a luxury, luxurious life, I need to do what luxurious people do, go where they go, work where they work, dream like they dream. You set those boundaries for yourself. You start to, every cell in your body obeys. Every cell in your body listens to you. That is the power that God gave us. If you can dream it, it can happen. But you have to have some boundaries for yourself. You have to stop feeling sorry for yourself day in and day out. You're feeling sorry for yourself. You're crying at night. Like, man, I wish I was strong enough to just break off this relationship 
relationship. I'm not strong enough to just leave this friendship. I'm not strong enough to leave my job. I'm not strong enough to cut off that family member. I feel like, oh my God, Lord, get me out of this. You need to help yourself too. How can you be strong if God spoon feed you every time, hold your hand to get you out of everything? When he wants you to exercise your strength too. Because you know what happens? When I used to pray, God, get me out of this situation, please. God will get me out of that toxic relationship. But I didn't learn anything because he held my hand. And I'd find myself right back into another toxic relationship. And this is why sometimes God don't listen. He hears your prayers. But he's like, nope, you're going to get yourself out of this. And you know what this reminds me of? Of Moses again in the Bible. When Moses took the um, honor from God um, in front of the Israelites and, and God was like, you know, because of this, you're not going to see Canaan. You're not going to see the promised land in a discussion. Moses kept praying, pleading to God, kept like, man, these Israelites blaming them because he worked so hard. He wanted to see the promised land. At one point, God said, get away from me with that. I already said what I said, basically, right? God said, hey, don't, don't even pray about this no more. I already said what I said. Same thing with David. Even God has boundaries. David went and did what he did with Bathsheba, right? Took out her husband. David prayed and fasted to God, please save the child. God was like, I said what I said, enough. So if God can do that, sometimes we're praying, we're praying and we're like, why isn't he listening? There's a lesson. Because if I don't teach you this lesson, if he didn't teach David that lesson, David would have continued to just be out here stealing people's wives. If he didn't teach Moses that lesson, Moses would have felt so comfortable to keep disrespecting God in front of the people. And he still loved Moses. Moses died with his full vision, full vitality. And we know Moses is going to see the glory of God, right? So is David. He said David was a man after his own heart, but he still disciplines those he loved. Sometimes you're situation keeps getting worse because he's trying to discipline you because he loves you and you keep fighting with him you keep doing that tug of war in that same situation because you cannot see that he's just trying to fight with you he's just trying to get you out he's trying to show you it's gonna keep getting bad worse and worse until you learn the lesson from it some of you guys keep going through the same experiences year in and year out because you're not learning nothing from this experience the same cycle of poverty the same um, toxic relationships toxic friendships toxic environments you're still in it because you're not listening you're just praying for God to get you out of it but you're not doing the internal work you're not working on yourself you're not doing what you have to do you have to at some point stop being a punk for yourself that's just me keeping it real like I have to look in the mirror and tell myself stop being a punk say no cut it off I don't care you don't owe nobody an explanation I change your number do what you got to do cut it off I cut everything off y'all not about to stress me make me age make me lose my health make me lose my vitality add to the already all the problems I already have in my life you're gonna come add more to it and you don't care about me you never care about me I'm not gonna go through that for nobody now you have a young girl like Shinquela that lost her life while she was out here paying for these people vacations that don't have to be your life and this is why you need boundaries to protect you from these type of quality, low quality, low value experiences. And you're going to be better for it. So what? People hate you. So what? People think you extra. So what? That's your idea of me. Thank you. I am all that. Okay. I, I think I'm all that. So because I'm all that, I'm not going to be in these type of situations. It doesn't mean you're better than anybody. You just respect yourself. You respect your God. You respect yourself, your body, your mind. People can't play with you, trick you into exposing, like giving your body to them, your life, your youth, your vitality. <laughs> Whew. I'm sorry, guys. I went into preaching and I'm going to wrap it up right here because y'all don't know. This is the only topic I always speak about on this channel. Y'all see me get so passionate about because y'all just don't know how many people struggle with this, how many emails I've gotten from you guys and how I myself wish Oh, so many years of my life was wasted. People pleasing, not having boundaries, accepting whatever. And I wish I just knew this, man. I wish. You guys have no idea the quality of life that I'm living would have been to the tens so much better if I just listened to God. If I learned something from this. I sound like Tyra. Learn something from this. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Share this video. You never know who could need this. Share it on your Facebooks, your Instagrams, your Twitter. Tag me. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time. Mwah.